from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Hi, hello, welcome to theCUBE. I'm James Kabilis. I'm the lead analyst for Big Data Analytics at the Wikibon, which is the uh, team inside of SiliconANGLE Media that uh, focuses on, uh, on emerging trends and technologies. We are here uh, on theCUBE at uh, DataWorks Summit uh, 2018 in Berlin, Germany. And uh, I have a guest here, this is Mugi van, if I get it wrong, <laughs> Mugi van Staden, That's or Staden enough, yep. um, who is with Obsidian, which is a South Africa-based uh, partner of Hortonworks. Um, and um, I'm not familiar with Obsidian, so I'm going to ask Mugi to, uh, to tell us a little bit about your company, what you do, um, your focus on open source, um, and really the opportunities you see for big data for Hadoop um, in um, South Africa, or really the African continent yeah. as a whole. So, Mugi. Yeah, James, great to be here. Uh, yes, okay. Obsidian, uh, we started it 23 years ago, uh, focusing mostly on open source technologies, and as you can imagine, that has changed a lot over the last 23 years. Uh, when we started, uh, the concept of selling Linux was basically a box with a hat and maybe a t-shirt in it. Uh, today, that's changed. <laughs> we Hopefully don't do there's that a stuffed <laughs> penguin in there too. <laughs> I could use maybe that right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, our business has evolved a lot over the last 23 mm -hmm. years. Uh, and one of the technologies that has come around uh, is Hadoop, uh, and we actually, started with some of the other uh, Hadoop vendors out there as our first partnerships and uh, probably three, four years ago uh, we decided to take on Hortonworks as one of our vendors. Uh, we found them an amazing company to, to work with uh, and together with them we, we've now worked in uh, four of the big banks in South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is actually uh, here at uh, DataWorks Summit. They won an award last night mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, fantastic to be part of all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, South Africa being so far removed from the rest of the world, uh, they have different challenges. Everybody's uh, nervous of cloud, uh, we have the joys that we don't really have any cloud players locally yet. Uh, but the two big players in, in Microsoft and Amazon are planning some data centers soon. Mm -hmm. So the guys have different challenges to, to Europe and, uh, and to the States. Uh, but big data, the big banks are, are looking at it, starting to deploy nice Hadoop clusters, mm -hmm. starting to ingest data, starting to get real business value out of it. Uh, and we're there to help. Uh, and hopefully the, the four is the start for us and we can help lots of customers on this journey. Our, um, our South African based companies, uh, because you are so distant in terms of miles on the planet, from Europe, from the EU, are you, um, is any company in South Africa or many companies uh, concerned at all about the global, or the, say the general data protection regulation, GDPR? Um, US based companies certainly are because they operate in Europe. So is that a, um, a growing focus for them, and we have five weeks until GDPR yeah. kicks in. Uh, tell yeah. me about it. Yeah, so uh, from a South African point of view, uh, some of the banks and, and some of the companies would have subsidiaries in, in Europe, so for them it's, it's a very real thing, but we have our own act called POPI, which is uh, the protection of uh, private inf information, so very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody is keeping an eye on it, everybody's worried, uh, and everybody's <laughs> I think everybody's worried for the uh, the first uh, company to be, to be fined, and then they will all make sure that they get their things right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, I, I think not just because of a legislation, I think it's something that everybody should worry about. Mm -hmm. How do we protect data? Uh, how do mm -hmm. we make sure that the right people have access to the correct data when they should, mm -hmm. and nobody violates that? Because I mean, in this, this day and age, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Google and Amazon and those guys probably know more about me than my family does. Um, <laughs> so so it, it's, it's a challenge for everybody, and I think it's, uh, it's just the right thing for companies to do is to make sure that the data that they do have that they really take good care of it. We, we trust them with our money, and now we're trusting them with our data. Um, so uh, it's a real challenge for everybody. Uh, so how long has Obsidian been a partner of Hortonworks, and how has your role, or partnership I should say, evolved over that time, and how do you see it evolving yeah going forward? Yeah, we've been a partner about three, four years now, okay. uh, and uh, it started off as a, as a value-added reseller. Uh, we're also a training partner in South Africa for them. Um, and uh, as they, they as a company have evolved, we've had to evolve with them. So, mm -hmm. you know, they started with, with HDP as their Hadoop platform. Uh, now they're doing NiFi and HDF, so we have to learn all of those technologies as well. Mm -hmm. But very, very excited where they're going with uh, 
data plane service just managing a customer's data across multiple clusters, multiple clouds, because mm -hmm. that's realistically where we see all the customers going, is you know, clusters on-premise, clusters in typically multiple clouds, and how do you manage that? And uh, we are very excited to, to walk this road together with Hortonworks and all the South African customers that we have. So um, you say your customers are deploying multiple clouds, public clouds or hybrid private public clouds. Give us a sense for in South Africa yep. whether public cloud is a major uh, option or is a deploy major deployment option or choice for yep. financial services firms. You Not work necessarily with. financial services. So we, most of them are, are kicking tires at this stage. Nobody's yeah. really putting major workloads in there. Um, uh, as I mentioned, both uh, Amazon and Microsoft are planning to put data centers down in South Africa very soon. And I think that, that will spur a, a big movement towards cloud. But we do have some customers, unfortunately not Hortonworks customers, that are actually mostly in the cloud. Uh, and they are now starting to look at a multi-cloud strategy. So mm -hmm. to ideally be in you know the three, four major cloud providers and uh, spinning up the right workloads on the right cloud. Uh, and we're there to help what, them. What are the most predominant workloads that your customers are running in the cloud? Is it back end in terms of data ingest and transformation? Is it a bit of maybe data warehousing yeah. with unstructured data? Is it a bit of things like queryable archiving? I want to get a sense for what is predominant right now in workloads? In yeah, I, th I think most of them start with, with developer environments, uh, et cetera, so the one customer that's heavily into uh, uh, cloud from a data point of view li literally is their data warehouse. They, they put everything in there. Uh, I think from the banking customers, most of them are considering uh, DR of their existing Hadoop clusters, right. uh, maybe a subset of the data, not necessarily everything. And I think some of them are also considering putting their unstructured data outside of the cloud because that's where most of it's coming from. I mean, if yeah. you have Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn data, it's a bit silly to pull all of that into your environment. Why not just put it in the cloud? That's where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, and analyze that and connect it back to your data where relevant. So I think a lot of the customers are would love to get there and now that Hortonworks makes it so much easier to do that, I think a lot of them will start moving in that direction. Now, <coughs> excuse me. So um, are, are any or many of your customers uh, doing development and training of machine learning algorithms and models in their clouds? And uh, to the extent that they are, are they using tools like the IBM Data Science Experience that Hortonworks uh, resells for that? I think it's definitely on the radar for a lot of them. I'm okay. not aware of anybody using it yet, right. uh, but lots of people are looking at it and excited about the, the partnership between IBM and Hortonworks. Mm -hmm. And IBM has been a you know, long-standing player in the South African market, uh, and uh, it's exciting for us as well to, to bring them into the whole Hortonworks ecosystem uh, and together solve real-world problems. Uh, give us a sense for uh, how built out the big data infrastructure is in neighboring countries yeah. like Botswana or or Angola, or yeah. uh, Mozambique, and yeah. so forth. Is it is that an area that your company, uh, those regions that your company operates in? Uh, we, 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 into? we don't have offices, but we don't have a problem going and helping customers there. Right. So we've had projects in the past, not data related, that we've flown in and, and help people. Um, most of the banks, from a South African point of view, have branches into Africa. Right. So uh, it's on the roadmap, uh, some are a little bit ahead of others, but definitely on the roadmap to actually put down Hadoop clusters in some of the major countries all throughout mm -hmm. Africa. Um, there's a big debate, do you put it down there, do you leave the data in South Africa? So they're all going through their own legislation, but it's mm -hmm. definitely on the roadmap for all of them to actually take their data knowledge and data science uh, up into Africa. Now you say that in, in South Africa proper, <coughs> there are privacy regulations um, you know, it, it would maybe not the same as GDPR, but equivalent. Um, throughout Africa, at least throughout Southern Africa, how um, uh, are, are, is privacy regulation lacking, or is it is it emerging? Or I think um, it's emerging. Uh, a lot of the countries do have <coughs> uh, the basic rule that you know their data shouldn't leave the country. Yeah. So everybody wants that data sovereignty, and that's why a lot of them will not go to cloud. Uh, and that's part of the challenges for the banks, that if they have branches up in Botswana, et cetera, mm -hmm. and Botswana rules are our data has to stay in country, mm -hmm. they have to figure out a way how do they connect that data to get the value for all of their customers. So uh, real world challenges for everybody. When you're uh, going into and selling into an emerging nation or developing nation, uh, do you need to provide upfront consulting uh, to help the customer bootstrap their own understanding of the technology and making the business case and so forth. And how, how consultative is the selling process into these kinds of things? Ab absolutely, and what we see with the banks, uh, most of them 
even have a consultant approach, approach within their own environment. So yeah. you would have the South African team maybe fly into the team at Namibia and Botswana and share some of the le learnings that they've mm -hmm. had. Uh, and then help those guys get up to speed. Uh, the reality is the, the skills are not necessarily in country, so there's a lot of training, a lot of help to go and say, we've done this, let us upskill you, and, and we're part of that process. So uh, we sometimes send in teams to come and do two, three day training, basics, etc., so that ultimately the guys can operationalize in each country by themselves. Mm. So, um, that's very interesting, so what um, do you want to take away from this event? Uh, what do you find most interesting in terms of the, uh, the sessions you've been in around the uh, community showcase that you can take back to, to Obsidian, back in your, in your country, and apply? Yeah. Um, the, the, like the, um, the announcement this morning of the Data Steward Studio, do you see a possible, uh, that your customers might be eager to use that for curation of their data in their yeah, clusters? Uh, definitely, and, and one of the key messages for me was, was Scott, the, the, the CTO's message about you know, your data strategy, your cloud strategy, your business strategy is effectively the same thing. And I think that's the biggest message that I would like to take back to, to the South African customers is to go and say, you need to start thinking about this. You know, as cloud becomes a more uh, bigger reality for us, uh, we have to align. We have to go and say, how do we get your data where it belongs? So, uh, you know, we, we like to say to, to our customers, we help their teams get the right code to the right compute and the right data. Mm -hmm. And I think it's absolutely critical for all of the customers to go and say, well, where is that data going to sit? Where is the right compute for that piece of data? And can we get it there and can we manage it, et cetera? Uh, and align to business strategies. Everybody's trying to do digital transformation. Uh, and uh, those three things go very much hand in hand. Well, Mugi, thank you very much. We're at the end of our slot. This has been great, been uh, excellent to learn more about Obsidian and the work you're doing in South Africa, um, uh, providing big data solutions or working with customers to build out the big data infrastructure in the, in the financial industry down there. So this has been theCUBE. We've been speaking with Mugi van Staden of Obsidian Systems and here at uh, Data Works Summit uh, 2018 in Berlin. Thank you very much.